Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Haynes. I'm an audiobook narrator. And uh, this is part of my series of accents and impersonations. Why do I have this series? Because uh, when I'm working on books, I frequently need to employ different accents that are serviceable for the storytelling and also uh, doing different voices for different celebrities that are out there informs the type of characterization that I might give uh, certain protagonists in the book. I frequently ask my authors, what, uh, what sort of celebrity do you think that uh, this character reminds you of? And then I get a thumbnail sketch. And frequently I can then take uh, one of the characters in my stock of voices and uh, start to modify it and apply it to uh, what I uh, need to do for the next book. So this week is going to be Benedict Cumberbatch. Why Benedict Cumberbatch? Well, because uh, people have been telling me, to my great surprise, that I remind them of Benedict Cumberbatch. I'm not sure exactly what it is, except uh, I'm a little bit uh, uh, thinner than I used to be. So maybe the, my, my tallness, thinness, and angularity reminds them of that. Anyway, I decided, well, why not? Why don't we, uh, why don't we use that and uh, see where we can go? What I'm going to do is I'm going to outline uh, what I think the essence of the Benedict Cumberbatch voice is, and then also some key vowel changes and uh, consonant uses that uh, distinguish his way of speaking, as well as the musicality. On top of that, because Benedict Cumberbatch is such a chameleon when it comes to voice work, I'm going to outline two other types of voices that seem to be part of his repertoire. All right, so first of all, we uh, have that Benedict Cumberbatch has a uh, contemporary RP, received pronunciation, British accent. Um, what I'm finding is that uh, in terms of his essence, uh, and I use very strange imagery for uh, what I consider to be a, a person's essence, for example, uh, with Michael Caine, it is a uh, branch, a tree branch that is being blown by the wind very delicately, but occasionally scraping against the window pane when the wind's particularly harsh. That's one example. Now, uh, bear with me. With Benedict Cumberbatch, he's got a, his normal speaking voice has a lot of what we call vocal fry to it. And also, um, it's very laid back, it's very gentle, and it's very casual. So what is that quality? I think of it as, imagine a champagne glass, which gives you this uh, kind of resonance here, which I actually missed when I was first uh, doing this. That sort of thin, lean resonance. And then inside that champagne glass, you've got about half a cup of Rice Krispies that are suddenly being uh, flooded with milk. So that snap, crackle, pop, snap, crackle, pop, snap, crackle, pop. Um, so if we have the festival was over from uh, song lyrics that I'm going to practice this accent to, the festival was over. Okay, so now we're going to go with um, some vowel changes and some consonant changes. First with the vowel changes, um, from standard RP, I find that Benedict Cumberbatch's O's and O's lean pretty hard into the O and E uh, that I associate more with the Australian accent. So um, the window was open, the window was open. Um, she had two queens. She had two queens. Next, the consonants. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch has very articulate sounds, very precise diction, except one area. And it's almost a precision in and of itself, but it's very mysterious to me. The words that end with T, more often than not, end at a stop. It, it, sit, fit. Um, let's see, uh, pit, <laughs> that, that sort of thing. So if we were to take, um, feel it, feel it, um, 
uh, we would have feel it. With Cumberbatch, I find that his voice tends to go into a bit of a monotone uh, when he's talking. That doesn't mean that he sounds robotic or bored, but there seems to be a steady, I'm just going to ride this thought out, ride this thought out, and then I'm going to switch to a new thought on a new sentence and ride that out, ride that out, ride that out. So uh, if we take um, the festival is over, the boys were all planning for a fall. The festival is over, the boys were all planning for a fall. Now, here's two other essences that I find uh, he goes into when doing uh, different character voices, particularly when he's playing a character that's not British um, or in animation. So uh, the first is what I call the, the slow motion Rice Krispie. And that's where he's just embracing every single syllable and sound of every word. My name is Khan. Um, or uh, when he's being smog or uh, when he's being the Grinch. So uh, if we were to take, um, he moved across the mirrored room. He moved across the mirrored room. Okay, and this next one is what I find uh, when especially playing Americans, particularly um, in uh, uh, Western characters, but uh, generally uh, when in a very uh, a character role that's particularly mm, uh, gruff and uh, particularly, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, a typical manly man type of thing. I find that his voice goes into less of a, this sound and more into a dense uh, sound. And what the way I describe this is a spoonful of peanut butter mixed into those Rice Krispies when the milk gets poured on them. So um, if we have, again, uh, he moved across the mirrored room. Let's take it in uh, uh, American accent. He moved across the mirrored room. Okay, everybody, it is song time. We're going to take uh, the principles of the Benedict Cumberbatch uh, voice. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with the slow motion Rice Krispies. We're going to move into the, um, uh, uh, the Rice Krispies with peanut butter. And then we're going to move into the regular Rice Krispies. And we're going to do this in the first three verses of Bob Dylan's Lily, Rosemary, and the Jack of Hearts. The festival was over. The boys were all planning for a fall. The cabaret was quiet, except for the drilling in the wall. The curfew had been lifted and the gambling wheel shut down. Anyone with any sense had already left town. He was standing in the doorway, looking like the Jack of Hearts. He moved across the mirrored room, set it up for everyone, he said. Then everyone commenced to do what they were doing before he turned their heads. He walked up to a stranger and he asked him with a grin, can you kindly tell me, sir, what time the show begins? Then he moved into a corner, face down like the Jack of Hearts. Backstage, the girls were playing five card stud by the stairs. Lily had two queens, she was hoping for a third to match her pair. Outside, the streets were filling up, the windows open wide. The gentle breeze was blowing. You could feel it from inside. Lily called another bet and drew up the Jack of Hearts. That was uh, the first three verses of Bob Dylan's Lily, Rosemary, and the Jack of Hearts uh, music, uh, background music by Kevin McLeod. Gives his stuff out royalty-free public domain. Thank you so much, Kevin. So... Did I nail Benedict Cumberbatch? Oh, I don't think so. But uh, perhaps I came close in some ways that resonate with you. And perhaps I missed it in specific ways that you can point out. Please put that info in the comments. Specific is terrific. We all learn this way. And I will see you next time.